<laughs> Greetings, peons. It is I, the instructor of Telaria State University, and I have broken into Telarian Community College, whose security systems are sad and pathetic. You can't keep me out. Stop your security threat right there, evil intruder. What's this? The professor! I'll simply use NordVPN, which today's video is sponsored by. It hides my IP address and encrypts all the data I send or receive. What shillery is this? For a limited time, you can get 75% off a three-year plan at nordvpn.com slash Talarian community. This special offer makes your subscription just $2.99 per month, so you can browse securely on all your devices. And for a short time, use code Talarian Community to get an extra month of Nord for free. My evil! It's no match for your shill powers! Super fast servers, 24-7 no, no. customer support with live chat and emails, up to six simultaneous connections, double data encryption for increased anonymity. So go to nordvpn.com slash Talarian community today. The special offer is just $2.99 per month. I'll get you next time, sellout. Next time. Blah 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 blah. When Wizards of the Coast first announced that Historic, the new non-rotating format that's coming to Magic Arena in the fall, would be getting cards from throughout Magic's history added into the game along with it, I was ecstatic. I had actually lost most of my interest in Arena right around the time of their releasing Electric Firecats and Battle Mastery into the game, which coincidentally seemed to slow down the once slick client into a more sluggish experience. I was was disheartened by the continued signaling that the overall strategy with Magic Arena was to stick a vacuum cleaner in our pockets and then suck until all that came up was lint. So I went and played Popper on Magic Online, and I had fun, and I thought, Oh my goodness, what if Magic Online outlasts Magic Arena? Hey, a less than stellar standard didn't help either. This is why formats like Modern and Commander, and yeah, Popper, are so important to the larger game of Magic, because you need an ecosystem of more than standard and draft, especially when in Arena's case, you don't even have real draft, but a disappointing bot draft where the bots are drafting daft picks. You see, in Paper Magic, when Standard cools off, I can grab a game of Modern or spend Thursday nights playing Commander, and it keeps me in Magic until the new set comes out and hopefully re-energizes Standard. Arena came out when Standard was hot, and Arena, therefore, was also hot. But as Standard cooled, there wasn't much else to do on Arena. And while, yeah, we're gonna get Brawl soon, but that's just standard commander. With rotation hitting, something like half of your arena collection is no longer going to be playable in standard. And when you consider all of this, the reason I'm saying all of this is just to emphasize that, well, this historic format it better be good. I might argue that a hot, wildly enjoyable historic format is kind of critical for Magic Arena's long-term success. And you all know me. I love non-rotating formats. I love playing with older cards. That's why I love Commander and Modern and Popper and Legacy, etc. So all of a sudden, Wizards of the Coast, who had been saying, don't ever expect Modern on Arena, and who had flat out said, no, we aren't adding old sets to Arena, they come right out of nowhere and start asking us, uh, hey, what old cards should we program into Arena for Historic? Worm Coil Engine? Brainstorm? Dark Confidant? Maybe Lord of Atlantis, I asked? No? Well, either way, look, I really did kind of flip my lid with that announcement. 
At first, anyway. I guess what I really liked about this announcement of older cards being added to Arena in just a few mere months is that it kind of sets a precedent. Old cards, old mechanics, these are things we know we can add to Arena. Could this lead to a modern master set in the future where we draft packs, keep our cards, and play them in historic? Might we even see things like a power cube on Arena? Imagine a power cube on Arena. After all, the reserve list does not even apply to Arena, so everything is seemingly on the table. Again, I was elated. But then I realized my elation was more over an excitement about what the announcement opened up in the realm of possibilities, and less about what it meant for the reality of Historic itself. Just what do these older, extremely powerful cards being added to the game and the format mean, well, for the game and the format? Let's start with Worm Coil Engine as an example of the potential problem this Historic Direction might be taking us. So think with me here. What does it mean when you take the current arena pool that's going to be historic and then just drop Worm Coil Engine into it? It'll be hands down one of, if not the best, six drops in that format, which means most decks are probably going to run it, probably going to run a playset of it. I mean, it is vastly superior to just about any other finisher currently available, and it can go in literally any color deck. So Worm Coil gets added, and suddenly the format that was supposed to be the place to play with your old cards that can't be used in standard anymore and can't be dusted or traded away, suddenly that place becomes the format where your old cards just aren't as good as these new special cards that are being put up for sale. Worm Coil Engine, Dark Confidant, and dozens of other powerhouses from the past. Who knows, maybe we'll get Vendillion Click or Noble Hierarch. Lots of old cards are being added to the historic format, but not as a part of any large larger organic set. They're just being plucked out of all of the sets and sold to us. And those are the cards that you need to be playing and, yes, paying for. And you'll be paying double if you want those cards. Scratch that. You'll be paying double for these newly added cards that you're probably going to kind of need in order to play in that historic format, competitively anyway. A recent quote explaining the need for double the price of historic cards is so that players have the most fun playing this game. Ah, yes, there's just nothing as fun as paying twice as much as what you're used to for digital goods. That also means that any cards that are rotating out that you haven't already grabbed, say Shocklands, will be two wild cards each instead of one. So snap them up now or you'll have to pay double. Fun! But hey, this is big bucks for wizards again, which is then going to incentivize them to follow this pattern. Program in another dozen historic cards and enter the profits. And it's profits more in line with real world modern in that these historic cards and decks will always have that artificially inflated value. Except there is a difference, which is that I can sell my modern deck or trade cards from it. I can also get years of play out of it and its cards, whereas these sporadic injections will likely wreak havoc with the format, doing what Wizards of the Coast seems to always want out of their non-rotating formats, which is creating a constant need for changing decks, a, a pseudo-rotation. And it's critical to keep in mind that throughout all of this, Historic was supposed to be the place where we had a reason and a purpose for our old rotated out cards. But these injections kind of defeat, at least in part, that purpose. It's covering up the fact that half your collection is about to rotate out in a system that has no dusting, no trading. You just need to refill everything all over again as far as standard is concerned, and then have this process repeat itself next year at the next rotation. The best thing for the long-term health of the game and system would be to have either a dusting or trade system. But failing that, the next best thing would be instead of releasing bursts of a handful of Magic's greatest hits to acquire for double the price, to just release classic sets as you would any other set, letting people flashback draft, collect cards, redeem wild cards at the regular rate, and have historic work its way backwards. 
and there's no rush. Yeah, it's resource intensive to program in new sets, but you know what? This doesn't have to be done all at once. Pace yourself, take a breath, work on the friends list and max support, and get rid of those cats that are causing the lag. We already have Amoncat and Kaladesh fully programmed on Arena, and half of Shadows over Innistrad is also programmed in. So do the slow drip. It's a lot of work and a lot of time and a lot of energy to program in those cards. But again, there's no rush. Start with Amonkhet, maybe even three to six months after historic hits. Let us draft it in a flashback draft, in between standard sets perhaps, and redeem wild cards at the normal rate and play all of this that we acquire in historic. Then take a breath. Do Kaladesh next, or you know what, maybe skip Kaladesh, finish off that Shadows block. Let Shadows over Innistrad come out next. See how the format looks. You want to spice things up? Maybe Lorwyn Remastered is something that you might look to offer in the future, in time to come. But you have that time. And I want to be really clear on this. Adding old sets to Historic to Arena, this is a really good thing. But just dropping in random cards to the Historic format is a poorly thought out implementation. Pursue instead flashback drafts. Take your time, work your way backwards, add older sets. Look to one day offer original Innistrad or perhaps Innistrad Remastered on Arena, not just, hey, here's Liliana and Snapcaster, enjoy. And charging double for the format also greatly hinders entry into the format, and that hindrance increases exponentially with time. Stop trying to dictate how people enjoy the game. You know what? If a lot of people are on Arena playing Historic, and you're like, well, I really wish they were playing Standard, be happy they're playing Arena. It's the same game, and if you've got the same wildcard redemption, then just leave it at that. Sacrificing long-term stability for short-term profits is ultimately going to harm long-term profits. Build a format instead to last. But that is, of course, just what I am winding on about today. What about you? I want to hear what you think of the historic format. Do you even want old cards at all? Do you think historic should just be moving forward from what we have on Arena with no old cards added ever? Would you like to see one set from Magic's past, two sets from Magic's past going backwards added every year, back to Origins, back before? Or do you like what's being announced and agree with the idea of two wild cards for historic cards? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And this program was made possible thanks to a sponsorship from Card Kingdom, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. So thank you.